Okay. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> I've, uh, I just got this thing, so I thought I'd wear it around. It's really cheesy and weird, but I think it's fun. This is, yeah. It's, it's, it, you know what? You're, you're actually right. I didn't, uh, I didn't realize how large it was going to be. Um, but and so there's, there's hydraulic. So right now, is this on the ski? No, it's on the wheels. wheels. Yeah, the, the skis are actually in the up position right now. Right, and so there's hydraulics so you can move it. Yes, yeah, so there's hydraulics internal of the ski. Right. <clears throat> with positions, they're called positioning cylinders to make them move. Right. And they run a 3,000 3, PSI system. So it'll, when you take off, it'll uh, lower it. Basically, it'll lower it and take off and it'll spin it down first. And then the wheels okay. and the skis all come up together with the whole thing. Top of the ski will be flush to the Most standard C-130s that have, that have JATO mounts, they're mm -hmm. jettisonable from inside. Right. Uh, these planes have been modified with different mounts that are much more robust, mm -hmm. but the drawback is you can't jettison them. The Navy actually shot themselves down at least once, I, I, where a yeah. bottle broke loose and it shot through the propeller arc. Huh. Yeah, it's not a good then, thing. Yeah, so yeah, you gotta, you gotta land after that. The only drawback is because of these, mm -hmm. you don't have air deflector doors, they'd usually be right here, which are used, they, they extend out in the slipstream so that when you when the C-130 is used to uh, drop paratroopers out of these doors, mm -hmm. uh, this would uh, oh. eliminate the buffeting and the, and the initial shock to right. the paratroopers. So this plane can do anything a C-130 can do. You just really have very limited to these doors being opened in flight. Right. And that's because we don't have the air deflected doors. You could, but it would just be... It's very hard to open just... it. It's extremely hard to open it. Oh, okay. Because you have gotcha. the, the airflow goes over because the door actually opens in a little bit for a second. Gotcha. It's designed that way oh, so it, it pressurizes it doesn't pull out. Right, it's, it's in way. and then up. <clears throat> Correct. Gotcha. What's with the um, the tail tails of these being uh, orange? Uh, that is my best answer for that. Is <laughs> the Air Force well, mm -hmm. the orange color itself is designed for search and rescue purposes, okay. so it could be spotted. Sure, it's supposedly easier. Uh, but a lot of times, the lighting conditions right. in the air. Okay, just for visibility. Yeah, and the Navy. The only thing I wish we had was you know the Navy's paint scheme was similar. If you've ever seen the pictures of the Navy one thirty. Well, I was gonna say I was looking at some some videos and pictures and I saw some like test aircraft and other aircraft that had orange stripes on them. I, yeah, I can't speak to all the test aircraft. The Navy basically had a similar paint scheme, but the top of the plane, or the top third of the plane, and the top mm -hmm. surface of the wings, empennage and fuselage were a much darker gray, and that's so it would absorb the heat faster to melt any ice oh, that would be on the airplane. Gotcha. Air Force, certainly are. Okay. Uh, there so are three tanks in integral in the wings sure. and the two externals. So are They're these of eight tanks. So but are these extra just for this kind of mission no, so you can carry your the fuel? The newest C one thirty model, the J model, mm -hmm. don't come with these. Um, the plane is because the plane is more efficient mm -hmm. uh, both uh, propulsion wise that the drag that is the, there's very little benefit from the added weight and drag uh, in the newer version of the plane. Gotcha. Uh, we would totally use these now. We need them. There are some units that are used for just for training units that have mm -hmm. removed them because mm -hmm. of the drag. They never even use them. Right. Uh, we need them because we use it I mean, for fueling operations all the time. Yeah, and I mean, you guys are not only using this fuel, but you're also fueling up coal and Yeah, we download, it, we download it out of those tanks. Right. Correct. Huh. Interesting. I guess when you, when, you do, when you do that download, is that specifically 
specifically from these tanks, or are you just using the whatever available fuel? Okay. We try to burn. We try not to land with fuel in those tanks. Okay. More stress on the tanks on the wing itself. Gotcha. But uh, so we'll usually burn out of those first. Right. Uh, but sometimes we can't burn all the fuel out of it. So. Uh, ski. Yeah. I guess there's, I, I was going to, I saw this black color and I initially thought it it's was like a, it's, like a, it's like a Teflon. Right. We're looking okay. at a, a better surface underneath it, basically to reduce the friction. Sure. And these are like... Oh, I guess these, are these metal? Yeah. I don't oh. know exactly what kind of metal, right. but uh, probably it's mostly aluminum. Right. Some parts steel. Cool. Radar? Radar. Yes. Radar. Inside. Right. I think part of, part of the... Just watch your head. It's not really broken off the design. Right. I, I guess part, part of the, the wonder of this plane is that it's it's old and, and legendary. I mean, every military flies these and they're, they're used for everything. Yeah, they made over 2,000. They first flew in, I think, 1954. They're still making them today. So it's, uh, oh, the new ones look like a C-130. They're, they're not C-130s. Right. They're totally different airplanes. Huh. Completely different. This is this thing is steam gauge. This is really, really old. Oh, it is. Isn't There's no it? auto throttles. Very rudimentary autopilot. Um, so very much a stick motor. Airplane. Right. Cool. You're welcome to take a seat. Um, yeah, I was. I was gonna ask. Help yourself out. Just watch your knees on some of this stuff over here. Nice. So extra oxygen. Well, it's portable or oxygen, portable. so for some reason you have to move around the airplane if it was mm -hmm. pressurized at altitude, you have the ability to put your oxygen mask to the bottle. It's pretty yeah, limited in duration. Right. We have a system on, liquid oxygen system on board the airplane. Right, right, right. That's primary. And I noticed that like behind you there's a little hanging bag with the oxygen hood. Right. Escape hood. Behind us. Oh, when, when you're sitting on the... Uh, oh, as a passenger. Yeah, as a passenger. Yeah, 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 yeah right, yeah. The, the, the pots, yeah, those are right. for the passengers and uh, for emergency oxygen to get smoke and fumes inside the right. uh, cabin. Um, so flat, can, can I move this up? Yeah, there should be, let's see, in that seat, it should be your lever here. Pull, pull the lever back and then kind of use your... Yeah, there you go. Scoot up. You can adjust the pedals. There's a little knob here left there that kind of pulls out. And the rudder pedals... You can, we can pull yeah, that out a little I, bit and push forward on the pedal. Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh, okay. All right, ready to take off. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be a little little out of alignment here. Our, our rudders pushed over. Right? Yeah, that's right. It's it's all hydraulically assisted. Of course, so of course. You, so can, it's, you can move it. It has the this, ability to this manual reversion. Right. Is th this has manual reversion? It does. It does. It's very hard to use in right. flight with the airload on it, but. Uh, but if you really had to, you can make that work. They didn't say it though. I've never. I've done the simulator. It's very hard. It takes a lot of force. <laughs> right. it's, it's a plane that's designed to go into combat, so it has a lot of redundant systems. Yeah. On yeah. Sure. Right. I was actually. I was checking out uh, on the top of the fuselage. I saw all the cables. And everything. Yeah. The, well, the two cables. Those are. Oh, inside. Yeah. Those are the flight control cables. Right. Right. But none of those go out towards the wings. That's designed that way. Again, for being in combat. Sure. So it's less susceptible to having them shot up. Right. Um, I don't want to use too much of our time. Oh, okay. we've got 20 minutes. Okay, so we've got to head back in about 15 or so. Yeah, just so whatever. Yeah, you can ask any questions. Yeah, I'll call you here at so, all the systems. Right, so um, do you have electronic checklists on this? No, we or have manual checklists. We don't uh, we, we oh, oh, there's no, no book. book. Okay, yeah, of, I course, of course. Yeah, I didn't bring it with me. If we had time, I can show you my checklist. It's right. in our life support. And there's no key. <laughs> no key? No, you got a... There's battery. This yep, is the electrical system here. And basically you'll... You get the electrical system engaged off the battery and then you'll start the uh, auxiliary power unit, mm -hmm. which is this over here, mm -hmm. and then that gives you more electrical power. It puts out a lot of electrical power sure, and sure. bleed air, and between the two of the, those two um, components, you mm -hmm. can get electrical starting circuits and mm -hmm. air to actually turn the propeller, yep. and then away you go. There you go. And then, yeah, that's, uh, um. this is how you engage those. It's a little piece of the start switches. Uh, until you have electrical power, they don't do anything. Right. Um, actually, there was one other thing that I was really wondering about. Sure. Is your sextant. Yeah, I think we're and the only ones that's, to use it. And I was kind of thinking, I was I was like, you know, I've, I've walked up to the cockpit before and I've seen all this, which is incredible. Yeah. But what I'd really love to check out is that sextant. 
Is there any way we can open it? it? Right. I mean, I do. We gotta get that off the video. <laughs> They're really expensive. <laughs> of so course. This is the port over here. Okay. Right. So, so, so in this this port right now is um is just an antenna. Uh, Yes, very little bit. Further. Right. Yeah, I'm not a navigator, so I've I've never I, I've looked through it before. Right. But I've never I I wouldn't have a clue what I'm doing. Sure, sure, sure. But they're actually very valuable. So I'm told. I don't think they make them anymore. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt both of those. Cool. They have they get evaluated on, huh. on celestial navigation. Cool. Yeah, anything that we have to do, we get we get sure. evaluated on. So right. actually, you know what you're doing. Huh. And then and then this is a, an escape hatch. Yeah. If you and we just close this up before I forget. Sure. Yep. So we, I yeah. Can open let's that up let's make sure this is put away perfectly. We're not allowed to go out <laughs> on the wing anymore, but we can stick our head up. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. It's a pretty cool view. Yeah, I, I bet. strap gets done first and then the green strap goes over top okay. and everything. Yeah, All so right. undo that green strap and then velcro the yellow. It it's pretty nice that you guys have like a micro galley here. That's about it. Yeah, the yeah. new that one other that new airplane I showed you has yeah. that has a microwave as opposed to an oven. Oh, okay. This is an oven this down is, there. That's right. about it. That's all you get. Yeah. So with a bed, I mean, how much, uh, with maximum fuel and everything, how much time in the air could you get out of this? Uh, well, you have, you have maximum endurance and the maximum range, are two separate right. uh, I'm, ways I'm, of I'm, I'm asking time in the air. If you just wanted to be in the air yep. and you flew it to maximum endurance airspeed, you could yep. probably go, it holds about 60,000 pounds of fuel and a lot of variables uh -huh. in temperature and altitude. Sure. All things being equal, uh, probably closer towards 11 hours, but maximum range is uh -huh. probably about nine and a half. Okay. So when we have really long, you know, bad wind days getting mm -hmm. to uh, 
price charts are down here. We, mm -hmm. We're almost at the max range of the airplane. Yeah, Actually, right. We can't take, take very little bit. Right. It's we'll not made it. for it. Yeah, right. This is a tactical airlifter. They try to make it a strategic airlifter here. We're kind of telling Yeah. It comes off that comes off just like that. It's time for escape hatch. Here's your rope. Just don't grab the end of the rope right. you'll hit the ground with it. But uh, <laughs> it's, it really is. The rope is longer than it's supposed to. I don't understand that huh. logic, but um, yeah, just like this, this, and then just get a little foot step here. Okay. This is as far as I can let you go. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Old days, we used to be able to walk out on the airplane. Wow, cool, right on. There's a little grip up here too. Oh, oh, I see that there's a there's there's a little tread up here, so you yeah. can walk all the way out there. Sure. And is that I mean, is that a, a typical part of the inspection? Yeah, the engine Right. Actually, quite nice. Yeah. Just, I, I, I'm surprised at how quickly and easily this just comes. Well, yeah, off. when you're pressurized, well, it, pre you know, it, it, of course, it can't open. That's, that's the whole thing. Slides built into it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I think I remember the other night about um, in some of the, in some of them I've seen like a GPS and kind of like stuck right there. Yeah, sometimes it's they'll kind of put an antenna through here. Oh, okay. For our iridium phones, and we're trying sure. to get the planes modified so it's hardwired for all that. Instead of this, I mean, that would, yeah, that because it looks here. it looks a little weird. It does. It's not. It wasn't designed that way, <laughs> and it, it costs money to modify the planes, and right. it's hard to get. Uh, I guess if you modify it, it's got to be checked out. Yeah, it's not as simple as just process. you know run a wire from here to there right. and away you go. And, and here you guys are like, boop, now we have GPS. Yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> right. pretty much it. As for the navigator, they just they use that to help manipulate part of the controls of the radar. Oh, okay. Uh, to put the cursor on things and give you lat longs. It mm -hmm, works just mm -hmm. like similar to what a, you know, a, what a fighter or a bomber would do. You mm -hmm. put the crosshairs and stuff and tells you where that point is. And right. The radar that we have on this plane, an upgraded radar, is, uh, is it's now an older radar for fighters, but it used to be mm -hmm. the same, same concept and technology. Hmm. Great. Um, cool. One more quick thing. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, I want a picture of myself up here. Sure. <laughs> Can we do that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you do that? Uh, right. Hold it. Yeah. I don't think they go anywhere. Good. Okay. okay. All right, Jeff. Clear for takeoff. Awesome. You're welcome. Lights. 
Those jump lights. Right, jump lights. Yeah, so, we, we, we airdrop out of this airplane. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I mean, I, Wait. They're, they're standard. They don't use these doors. They just come standard with the plane, but we sure. have other airplanes that are based that are non, that are not on the skis. Right. And we used to throw paratroopers out all the time. Huh. But we still use those airdrop out of here, out the back. Oh, oh really? Okay. And you, you can do airdrops, like, from high up sure. with parachutes, or... I've seen, I've seen, uh, the rolling... They don't do that anymore. That's called LAPES. Uh, LAPES was called Lapes. Low Altitude Parachute Practice System. I don't think right. the Air Force does it anymore. Okay. It's very dangerous. Okay. That was a way of uh, more accurately delivering you know, right. uh, wartime supplies into a landing strip without landing. Mm -hmm. and sometimes airdrop is it's, it's an art more than a science. Sure. Uh, so make sure that the stuff you got to is going to a Sure. Oh, right. And this is the toilet. There's the yeah. toilet. Great. This is amazing. Thank, thank you for the tour. Oh, you're welcome. I feel bad that we're rushing through this. Yeah, it's okay. I just, uh, I'll just say there's a chance tomorrow that I don't fly. If well, I don't, right. The day before I leave, I'm pretty much. I think that's why I got to get back I think our, our laundry. I think our fates are tied together for the next day or two here as we both try to get to waste, right? Is that well, yeah, that's your flight? No it is. There's a chance that we're trying to send another one of our. We're still handling pilots right now. That's why I'm on the schedule to fly. Ah, okay. I'm the commander down here. I'm not usually. You want a picture of a selfie on the outside? Of yeah, I'd love one actually. Especially you got Airbus in the background. It's kind of amazing. And and actually, you know what I would I would like is is a picture of me in front of the nose of this one. But if you could get the yeah. line down here yeah. too, that'd be great. Of I'm gonna I'm just gonna run out here. Signing off. It's uh, it's December 30th, 2014. At uh, at McMurdo Station at Willie Field, Williams Field, um, outside of McMurdo Station, Antarctica.